Welcome to the Prodigal and the Priest podcast, a podcast about faith, sports, and two friends from different cultures. Here are your hosts, Joey Scansella and Father Paul Bechter. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, or I don't know, whenever you tune into your listening pleasure, right? How are you doing, Father Paul? I'm doing good. How you doing? Do, just good after <laughs> just, last night? Just good. So today is oh, Thursday. Yeah. We With record the Mavs on Thursday. Winning? Spoiler, yeah. the Mavs won game two. <laughs> Spoiler, who watches the complete day after and can avoid all of that? It was an incredible game. I'm so happy. That's the way game one should have looked. I'm still mad about Kristaps getting ejected on Monday for no Bo- reason. Boban. Huh? Sabotage, but more Boban. Uh, that's my my humble request is more Boban Marjanovic because he was destroying last night. He was, <laughs> was. And if you have a chance to go back and watch his like post-game interview with um, <laughs> Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal and all of them. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. But welcome to Prodigal mm-hmm. and the Priest and me. Today is our question segment. So you guys write in with questions, statements. A lot of you just like giving us statements too, which we like. We love to hear from you. So if you have a question or you want to reach out to us, there's a few ways to do that. One would be through our social media accounts, our Instagram, our Facebook, and those things. Um, second is through our website, stanneanparish.org slash ptp and third is through our direct email which is mm. prodigal and the priest at gmail.com underutilized prodigal. under is it i don't know i don't know or most people just look us up and like find our you know <laughs> email addresses that aren't hidden anywhere That's and right. just like email us so i love it i love it i love it so all right here we go you ready for this let's do this um okay <clears throat> who did your voice intro it's pretty great <laughs> well thank you um it is a new thing we're, we're playing around with it yeah. I, I think i like it yeah yeah it, it feels a, normal already yeah it feels normal Only used it yeah. once or something but a guy named charlie did it so um it's pretty great I would love him to do like some more drops, like watching, thinking, reading, you know, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, that'd be great. So we could do it like, or Uh, even on this, like next question. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. We'll pray about it. Okay. But shout out Charlie. Thank you. Shout out Charlie. uh, Thank you. Um, Okay. Pope Saint. How do you say this? Hormistus. Hormistus was Pope in the early 500s who once was married in brackets <laughs> widowed and had a son who also became pope and he helped heal a schism see this is what i mean by statements there's no question yet we love you chris thank you for submitting this but we'll continue to read on i read about him because his feast day was last week and i prayed a novena for his intercession so here come the questions what is a no- why is a novena called a novena where did this tradition come from and who is an obscure saint you know about? Mm. Okay. So, so novena. Novena comes from the Latin word novem. It means nine. So novena refers to nine days of prayer for something. Or in German, nine. No. Isn't it? No, that means no. Ah, whatever. German. Same thing. It's nice, though. <laughs> nice try. I tried. Um, You're always tossing out the Hebrew. I got to go for some <laughs> other languages, you know. So, um, so novena refers to nine pra- nine days of prayer, um, and the tradition of nine days of prayer takes its origin from the very earliest days of Christianity, from the time between the ascension of Jesus, traditionally on a Thursday, and the next Sunday, which is the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, because we read in Acts of the Apostles that. From the time of the ascension of Jesus, the apostles, together with Mary, let me find the exact passage. It's in uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. If you look at Acts of of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 14, uh, right after the ascension, then it says, all of these, referring to the apostles, devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brethren. Um, and so they're devoting themselves of one accord. That's uh, homothumadon. We've talked about that word before yep. different times. It's a Greek word. It, 
It refers to kind of a deep unity. Um, and they, they devoted themselves of one accord to prayer for those nine days. And then came the Holy Spirit of Pentecost uh, and descend upon them with the birth of the church. So uh, in that tradition, uh, sometimes we'll set apart nine days to pray for one thing specifically. Um, to ask for a particular intercession of a saint or to pray for a particular cause or whatever. It's just a, it, I mean, it, it worked for the apostles. Are you personally, so, I mean, you like novenas, you personally, just speaking personally. Speaking personally, I prayed a lot more novenas before I became a priest. Okay. Um, like that they would like accept you <laughs> or <laughs> what? That right. yeah. <laughs> like, I can just make it to next year. Please just let me. No, it was something I, I did when I was, when I was really getting into my faith for the first time as mm. a, as a layman, um, in university, I came across a whole bunch of books of prayer and there were a bunch of novenas in there. And so I started nice. to get really into it, but I will say that it is, it, it's not hard going down that track to start just piling on novenas. Yeah. And for it to become a little mechanical, there's mm-hmm. just, it's it's not that they're bad, but it's just easy to start doing stuff like that or, or like wearing tons of, you know, medals and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I kind of became that guy for a little you bit. You hear that Catholic like walking into adoration. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's great. It's great. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wear a miraculous medal uh, yeah. with our lady on it. And it's, it's a huge one that these sisters gave to me. Um, right. I, it doesn't work in the airport. I always have to take it off before yeah. I get there. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so yeah, I think they I, anyway, serve a purpose of time, no, it's, things like, like that. all these devotions are really good. It's just, that's my one caution is that it's easy to start piling them on and then to lose sort of the silence and interiority, uh, that prayer is supposed to lead us to. It's an intimate right. moment of conversation with God and or the even external like, stuff yeah. leads us to that. Yeah. Or even the magic that people think like people are like, yeah. well, here's a magical nine day prayer that's going to show me. Right you know, God's truth for my life. And I'm like, okay. It's um, it's the same logic as these email chains, right? right, <laughs> you right, know, right. Forward Do not e- break this email. Yeah, forward this email to 50 other people and then all your wildest dreams will come true. Oh, like, man. That's Wait, not I how shouldn't God do works. this? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay. I mean, I'm saying this on the air to get you to stop sending me these emails because right. you're flooding my, <laughs> my inbox. <laughs> so favorite novena? Oh, <laughs> got anything you, d- you just totally stumped me i, I don't know novena no? to the holy spirit at pentecost cool i like mary undoer of knots okay i think that's a great note respect okay um there you go on the tradition who's an obscure saint you know about i'll you know i learned about one saint in college we had to take an entire course in our catechetic catechetics program called um saints in their lives um saint charles lawanga um, uh, part of mm-hmm. the Ugandan martyrs. Um, I just often find that he's not known about really well and that um, he opposed um, the ruler Mwanda or Mo- Mwanga or so, something with an M. Yeah. And um, he opposed no. him and on his deathbed got baptized, was burned at the stake. Um, I think it just shows like people have this thought that it's like, well, you know, they live their entire life catholic different things and like at the last moment he saw this truth revealed to him and followed it and was baptized and burned at the stake and like to know that like every moment's a moment of metanoia conversion nice thank you so that's my saint i i think he's pretty obscure most people probably haven't heard about yeah i mean he's on the the universal calendar so like he has a feast day so you just celebrate every year like well i mean like not that obscure. Whatever. Yeah, 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 exactly. A really another ex- obscure one is uh, John Paul II. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, <laughs> you're up. Um, Santa Restituta, Saint Restituta. Um, so I got one. Of the last things I did before I left Rome was I went to this little island off of Naples and just made a little vacation, and it happened to be the weekend when it was the feast day of their patron saint, their patroness, Saint Restituta, who was an early ro- or early martyr in North Africa, in Carthage. Okay. And who somehow became the um, the patroness of this little island um, off of Naples. And like the whole island 
came out in procession. Uh, they even did this like play on the beach to act out her martyrdom Whoa. and her arrival. It was amazing. Like it was Italian piety at its finest. I just, there were, you know, marching bands everywhere. There was like overly right. saccharine music. Right. And um, it was just fantastic. One of this, the most beautiful moments of that, that last year in Rome. And so like, not that many people know about uh, St. Restituta, mm-hmm. um, but she's awesome. Like, yeah. I got really into just learning about her life, and um, I still have a little little picture of her that I bought while I was there and put up on my, my dresser. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. You know, my wife and I, um, <laughs> our, our firstborn son is named Dominic, and for the longest time, we both thought, we both had a different saint in mind of who he was named after. Oh, so Savio Nikki was like, okay. yeah, yeah. So I was like, I love St. Dominic Savio, which I don't think a ton know about, you know, cause he was so young mm-hmm. when he died. Um, and so it was just, it's, it's kind of funny to think about. So every feast day of like St. Dominic of the Dominicans, you know, like all that, we celebrate Dominic, our son, and then also mm. on Dominic Savio's feast day. So Dominic mm. Savio, look him up. Okay, next question. Mm. Do you ever think a woman will play in one of like the top like four main mm-hmm. men's sports professionally? So we're talking yeah. like so basketball, baseball, basketball, hockey, football. football. Yeah. Do we ever think uh, a woman will ever play in one of those kind of four main sports professionally um ever yes probably ever yeah yeah i don't know what ever means right i think Um. it means ever (laughs) (laughs) um Um, i i I don't know i I don't see it don't see it Yeah. yeah i yeah and i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing necessarily i just don't really see it right right trying to excuse myself here right well, making value judgments. I just, I don't see it in baseball. Yeah. Um, just the way like, yeah, I just don't see it in baseball. <laughs> Football, besides a kicker. Because I know some like, I mean, Nikki was a goalie. She can like mm-hmm. kick the heck out She's of us. She's got a, a foot. Uh, uh, yeah, like she could probably do better than an NFL kicker at times, you know, in her heyday. I'm sure she could do better than me. Well, yeah. Sorry, but that's not a real comparison. (laughs) Are you a professional (laughs) athlete? Like, so... I kind of wanted to be. I know, yeah. um, So, I mean, like, golf... Really better than an NFL kicker in her heyday? That's... I bet. She would probably disagree, but... That's awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. And so... Or at least with practice getting there, like, yeah, I don't got think, the potential. To. Yeah, but besides that, I'm not sure. Also, based out of the fact of, I think some players. I'm not saying it's right. Would boycott though, being like, if this woman was on her, I'm not going to hit her, or I'm not going to, you know, like, yeah. I I think it just it's going to provide some issues. I don't see it in basketball, no. just for like. The jumping, different things like that. Yeah, and just the physicality of it. It just... Right. So, like, I mean... And hockey, no. Like, the differences between men and women physically, right, in terms of, like, the way we're athletic, right? Mm -hmm. There's plenty of women who are far more athletic than than men, but it tends to be in different ways. Right. And, like, upper body strength isn't normally something um, that just women excel in. Right. And so something like basketball just doesn't seem... Like they could ever be competitive with with men, right? Um, in that yeah, same when you league. look at like LeBron James and his like traps are like touching his ears practically, and like his upper yeah. butt, you know, like I'm like, uh. <laughs> um, but then like from a Catholic perspective, I don't know. I just I think that there's something good about having like men's only leagues and women's only leagues. Like there's something right. something almost immodest about playing like close contact physical sports together with members of the opposite sex. Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, okay. So you hypothetically, <clears throat> I love how I'm adding questions to our questions. Yeah, like we do don't it. have enough. So hypothetically you have like, you know, you weren't a priest, you got married, you had a family child, you have a daughter. 
Yeah. Up to a certain point, they don't have like um, softball. Mm -hmm. So the only option is little league. That's fine. I I'm, so what I'm talking about is like something like basketball on a high level. So you, I'm not talking so to, much about yeah. kids. Okay, so uh, you're talking after, like I, after the age of what though? I don't age know. of reason? I don't no, know. Just ages. <laughs> like I don't know. I I still don't really know how old kids are when you say like you know a 13 year old. I don't know what that yeah, looks like, like exactly. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything to me either. Because okay, I like, grew up in Bermuda and we didn't have this category. I think like 12 and up is sixth grade and up. That's still not helpful. Okay, wow. Um, but but I played I played You're little lost. league and senior league and stuff like that, and it was a it was a mixed team, mm -hmm. right? Um, like and some of the girls on my team were actually one of them that I remember was like better than pretty much everyone else on the team. Mm. So I'm not saying like that, but I'm what talking was her about name profession. Uh, Adrian. I'm talking Adrian. About, oh, Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about professional sports, right? Right, and that's a whole different thing. Yeah, I really think once you get to the high school level, so 14 and up, <laughs> okay. um, I do think there starts to be like a bigger gap in like just the body's ability and hitting puberty and all yeah. those things. And so I'm sure we'll get some hate emails from this being like, I guess, be like maybe, I don't know. I don't know. We don't have that many <laughs> listeners to have hate emails. So I mean, what does our opinion really have to do with, with anything on this? Well, we are a nationally recognized podcast yeah we're influencers by, i forgot about that yeah influence. i was like i'm not making the rules for any of these leagues um <laughs> that's right okay this is one that we looked up some stuff last time but we didn't get to so anonymously was submitted where does it say in the bible that speeding or drinking or drinking underage is sinful so drinking underage or speeding where does it say that in the bible that that's like wrong yeah, I love these questions of like, show me that in the Bible. Right. Show me where I shouldn't use uh, like social media inappropriately <laughs> right. in the Bible. <laughs> um, show me where it said there was going to be a pandemic in 2020 <laughs> in the Bible. Yeah, it's, I mean, so like behind that language, I, I will actually answer the question, but I want to address sort of like Next the, for, question, the, form of, it. the form of the question first. Right. Because like, show me where that is in the Bible is not really the right question to ask. That's not what the Bible is for us. It's not a handbook. Uh, people might get mad at me for this, but it's not a handbook that contains like an answer to every question we have. Right. It's, <laughs> it contains the revelation of Jesus Christ. Right. Um, and is itself the inspired word of God. And so it forms us in reading it. And it draws us into deeper relationship with Christ. Right. And it's also like the most privileged monument um, right. of at, at the basis of all of our tradition and everything else that seeks to understand and explicate the revelation that's contained in the Bible. So, right. um, I mean, it, even if you look at... And that's at, why we're built on two pillars, right? Though, like Yeah, scripture and tradition. Yeah, like... And and we could we could that that wouldn't be a bad uh, episode to go into just to to detail the the relationship between those two things because I know that's right. a common common struggle for people. But like right. even if you look at the Gospel of John where it says uh, towards the end it's like twenty or twenty one, um, probably twenty one, right at the very end, uh, it says that now Jesus did many other things besides these and all the books of the world could not contain. <laughs> right. And, and it's literally like, the greatest cop out <laughs> is like, well, if we yeah. didn't cover anything, we couldn't write it all down. Yeah. Thanks, John. Cause that's, that's not the point. Right. right? Um, or if you look at the very first line of the letter to the Hebrews, um, in many and varied ways, God has spoken to his people through the prophets and all this, but now in the fullness of time, he's spoken to us through a son. And so it's, it's saying Jesus is because he is God incarnate, become one of us, revealing who God is uh, through our human nature, um, mm -hmm. that he's the fullness of revelation. And so like, okay, <laughs> so that's the Bible? I don't know. Um, right. But to the specific question, like why do we believe that these things are sinful or what exactly do we believe about the sinfulness of these things? Mm -hmm. It's talking about the relationship of, of like human law, right. Um, to morality. Now there's a couple principles I can think of off the top of my head. Feel free to jump in. 
Um, but like the first one is that when you have a law that is a just law, mm-hmm. it's a civil law, right? Okay, so take drinking underage, for right. instance. The drinking age used to be 18 when my parents were growing up. Right. And then I remember my mom said, like, right as she was going to become legal for drinking, they moved it to 21. Nice. She was um, didn't get grandfathered in there. Right. Um, in Bermuda, where I grew up, it's 18. In Europe, I'm not sure it exists. Um, <laughs> as long as you like, can see over the bar, you can like have a drink. <laughs> that's not something fixed from all eternity by divine law. Right. Right. And it's not something revealed to us either. What is the age when you can start drinking <laughs> right. alcohol? Uh, it's not in the Bible. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah, not. Were they carding at the wedding feast? <laughs> like at Cana? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> like. It's like, <laughs> or, or. You know, people got in because there was no more wine, but then Jesus transforms the water into wine, and now right. all, all of a sudden it's like, well, I mean, y'all have to leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can't be here anymore. Um, those things pertain to human law, but that doesn't mean that they're unimportant or that we can just ignore them right. as Christians, right? If it's a just law made by a competent authority, we should obey it. That's right. part of the society that we live in, it's part of like using our human reason that God gave us and living in the police uh, society yep. and everything. Right. And when we, like, wouldn't we point to like give to Caesar what Caesar is due, like that type of yeah, you know, sure. reference in scripture that Jesus points out is like, yeah, yeah, government is saying this thing like you, you know, so. Yeah. And that, I mean, that applies very broadly. Um, but then when it looks, and, and so like, so like the sinfulness of it would come from, Breaking a law knowingly and freely that was a just law given for the sake of the common good uh, for society. So so take speeding. Yeah, so take speeding now. I think speeding is interesting because... Me too. The <laughs> because uh, I know plenty of Catholics who like understand that principle that I just talked about right. and say, all right, I'm going to take this very seriously. And so they'll like never cross over the speed limit. Right. So they're the ones who are going like 55 in a 60. Right. Just in case. And because we live in Dallas, like everybody else is going like 78. <laughs> and um, in a 40. <laughs> in a 40. <laughs> and so I think it's, this is a dangerous road to walk down if you start applying it to other things, but it makes sense right. for speeding. Yeah, yeah. Right? Let's be careful. Like, don't start applying this there. Um, you know, different. But like with these laws, you have to look at the level to which they're enforced and sort of the the intent there with the law. And that's the dangerous thing because you can start rationalizing away everything yep. if you just take take that line. Right. Um, but there is something in Catholic moral theology called epikeia, uh, which means it's a it's also in Greek philosophy, and it's it's understanding like the circumstances that a law is meant for. Mm-hmm. and just basically being prudent about understanding the purpose of the law. Right. For instance, totally fine to speed to get to the hospital if you have somebody who's dying in your car right. or who's pregnant and you Hypothetically know, going in labor. Nikki, she's pregnant. <laughs> I have to drive right? her to the hospital. Like that's an accepted thing where that law does not apply. Right. So that's already one circumstance where we can see that the law of speeding is not meant to be an absolute law applying to all a occasions but then like what about when traffic is going 70 like everybody's going 70 but the speed limit's 65 what should you do as a catholic Mm. and i think that (laughs) now this is dangerous for a priest to say right because you're gonna be like well the priest told me when the police officer calls you over pulls you over but like he calls (laughs) you but like (laughs) i i think that there's a certain reasonableness to going that the speed, the traffic is going because the speed limit is for the sake of safety. Mm-hmm. And um, it's obviously not enforced strictly outside of certain towns like Coppell <laughs> um, uh, when you're going like five miles over the speed limit. Yeah. Right. Don't, don't try this principle in Coppell. <laughs> yeah. So. No, they'll get you for one mile over <laughs> yeah. two miles over. <laughs> like there's a certain, you know, um, there's a certain uncertainty uh, to our ability to measure speed mm-hmm. that I think they'll give you leeway for. <laughs> right. But um, uh, so I don't like 
I, I really don't think it's sinful to go 65 in a 60. Right. I think you have to be prepared to accept the consequences. There you go. Um, without taking that principle and applying it to other things like the Ten Commandments where it's like, well, I'm prepared to accept the consequences of breaking these commandments laid down by God himself. Like that's $200 a- <laughs> speeding ticket, eternal damnation. <laughs> like We're like, talking about different co- we're consequences not, here. We're not consequentialists right. in our understanding of moral theology, but when it comes to human laws like this, which are made for the common good and should be obeyed, right. but have sort of a broader spectrum of like what's reasonable under the, 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 what am I saying? Yeah. The, uh, if you could see me on YouTube. Use the word of umbrella. Umbrella. of It's not exactly. Okay. I'm thinking of a word, but I can't get it. There um, you go. I'm not going to try to think of what word you're yeah. thinking of. <laughs> so like, yeah, I, I just think it's a different kind of thing. I will, though, say there is something to be said, though. Then you're on a clear road, right? Like, totally no traffic. Right. There is something to be said about, like, building the virtue of patience and different things like that, of training yourself to be like, I don't have to go with the flow of traffic. I don't feel unsafe. The speed limit's 35. I really feel I should go 45 or could go 45 or any of that. There is something, (laughs) I, I will just say, because... You know, for everything that Dallas is with traffic, imagine that on steroids in New Jersey. And so I remember this on my birthday, the day I got my license, which in New Jersey, you don't get your permit till 16, license till 17. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was driving on a road and there was (laughs) some guy cut another guy off. The guy sped up around him on the freeway grabbed a handful of pennies, rolled down his window, threw out his window to peg it at the other car. This is like my first day legally driving by myself. And I was like, I'm not going to survive. I'm not going to make it. But Jersey you know, rules. Jersey rules. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a point with this. But oh, so like growing up, I, I'll just be honest, I sped a lot. Sped a lot. And there was a point in my life and I think some of it, you know, influenced by having children in the car, different things like that to be like, okay, I'm not going with the flow of traffic. This is not on, you know, like I need to build this virtue up in this moment to be like, to follow the law. Yeah. I just want to toss that out as like, no, yeah. that, that, that's an excellent toss out. Toss out. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you. Um, and it also reminds me of something in a book that we've both read and quite liked called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. And it's... <laughs> Comer. Can't, can't handle the way it's... it's Comer. Comer. Well, it sounds like the Hebrew word for, for priest. But, right, right, right. Um, uh, anyway, um, he, okay, without getting into the whole thing... Right. Um, he identifies that a lot of us have something called hurry sickness mm. um, where we're obsessively hurried and can't seem to get out of it. And he recommends as part of his sort of comprehensive antidote, uh, doing something like going in the slow lane at the speed limit mm. and just setting your cruise control <laughs> and just dealing with the fact that everybody's driving around you and yeah. maybe honking or throwing handfuls of pennies at your car, which is crazy. <laughs> what is wrong with New Jersey? Um, yeah, but I love it. I but, miss it. Uh, he, he threw that out there to build the virtue of patience and work against the chronic hurry that can be a sickness. Yeah, for us, and I think that's that's a great idea. I've done that before, and sometimes it's hard. Um, uh, yeah, but it is really effective. Now, this is the last point I want to make about this, just right. because this is where the catechism gets involved mm. uh, with virtue language and stuff like that. In Catechism twenty two ninety, and just remember that's uh, catechism mm. goes by paragraph numbers, not page numbers. So if you're yeah. looking <laughs> up and you go to your Catechism of the Catholic Church, go to paragraph. 2290. Yeah. Or if you're on the internet and um, you search. <laughs> you live in this century, just Google it. <laughs> if you search for CCC 2290, um, it'll pull up a Vatican webpage, most likely. I haven't actually tried this. Um, and it'll bring you straight to that paragraph. CCC stands for Catechism of the Catholic Church. Right. Paragraph 2290. It reads like this The virtue of temperance disposes us to avoid every kind of excess. We tend to think of temperance as something just regarding food. 
um, but every kind of excess because virtue is found in the middle, right? You have too much or too little. The virtuous mean is the yep. middle ground. Yep. So the examples they give are the abuse of food, alcohol, tobacco, or medicine. Those incur grave guilt who, by drunkenness or a love of speed, mm. endanger their own and others' safety on the road, at sea, or in the air. <laughs> in the air. Um, <laughs> a love of speed in the air. I just picture like two American Airlines pilots being like, oh, really? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so for most of this, this is on the road. But look, it says like it. It doesn't. This is this is being considered under the aspect of the virtue of temperance, mm -hmm. which trains us to avoid every kind of excess. And it says when it comes to speeding, um, there is such a thing as a love of speed, yeah, which can cause us to endanger our own and other safety. Yep. And by that love of speed and by this endangerment of ourselves and others, we incur grave guilt. Yep. So that's that's catechism code language for serious sin. Yep. Right. Um, but it doesn't say that like keeping up with traffic, right? It doesn't include exactly. that here. Exactly. So that's that's the kind of fine distinction we're trying to make, which is a very important one and hopefully is has been clear enough. In this sort of rambling, <laughs> yeah. in our rambling. I've given, and um, if all that like doesn't work for you, have a child and let them tell you the speed limit because they love seeing. <sighs> and my kids love being like, "Dad, it says you're you're breaking the law. It says forty five and See, on your they get it. yeah yeah." So, um, so we're so glad that you guys uh, joined us today on Prodigal and the Priests and Welcome Me. The that oh, that was the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Outro instead of intro. Wow. Um, so thank you uh, to all those who joined us today on Prodigal and the Priest and me for our questions. Make sure to submit them on our forums. And uh, yeah, take care. God bless. <laughs>